Well, tensions in the Middle East are fueling fears of a wider war. Israel vowing to make Iran pay for its second firing this year of missiles into its territory. Our China and Japan say they are deeply concerned. Beijing has urged world leaders to play a constructive role and to stop further deterioration of the situation in the Middle East. Chinese state media earlier announcing the successful evacuation of more than 200 of its citizens from Lebanon. South Korea making similar moves. President Yoon suk yeol ordering a dispatch of military aircraft to fly its citizens out. Mr Yoon says the government has set up a 24-hour monitoring system for related risks, but has emphasised that South Koreans in the region are his top priority. Mr. Yoon also called for a swift but measured response to any possible impact on energy supplies. South Korea is the world's fourth largest importer of crude oil, with most of that coming from the Middle East. The United States says it was discussing a joint response and that it would work with Israel as longtime partner to ensure Iran faced severe consequences. Iran has warned the United States not to get involved. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei has blamed Washington and its allies for escalating regional tensions. You know, if they have to on the ground in Lebanon, Israel has issued a new warning for people in around 25 villages in the south. The alert comes as the IDF renews its bombardment of the Lebanese capital with at least a dozen airstrikes against what it said were targets belonging to Hezbollah. As well as announced new clashes with Israeli soldiers at a town in the south, the group also claiming it has conducted retaliatory strikes targeting Israeli forces in northern Haifa city. And for more of this, Trent Murray joins us live from Tel Aviv. Trent, the UN Security Council holding a meeting today on this conflict. And meanwhile, Israel has banned the UN chief Antonio Guterres from entering Israel. How could Israel's strained relations with the United Nations impact its military operations, its military campaign, pardon me? Well, this does really mark a new low in the relationship between Israel and the United Nations, which has been souring, of course, in recent months. And then amongst much of the backlash from the UN General Assembly and UN figures over Israel's military campaign, the latest information we have is that the foreign minister here has uh, determined that Secretary General Antonio Guterres is a persona non grata, meaning that the diplomat can no longer enter Israel. The justification for this uh, is a statement that Antonio Guterres put out last night regarding that is, uh, Iranian missile attack. The foreign ministry here said that he failed to mention Iran by name and did not unequivocally condemn its grave aggression. There is some disagreement already within Israel over this move. Some media sources are saying actually the foreign minister does not have the authority to do this. The authority lies with the interior minister who is in charge of issuing visas for who can come here. But this is just really I think, a distraction from the ongoing military campaign. Despite those UN calls, it seems Israelis are stepping up their uh, incursions into Lebanon. We are hearing reports of, uh, of increased fighting on the ground and more than two dozen villages have been told to evacuate south of the Latani River. Certainly the reports up on the border today suggest there's been increased artillery fire from both sides. Hezbollah saying it has dug in and is putting up a strong resistance. We've also just heard before coming on air Israel has reported its first casualty, a 22-year-old uh, reservist soldier who they say was killed in that fighting with Hezbollah. Uh, Trent, uh, we just heard uh, Iran's supreme leader essentially blaming Israel for what's happening in the region. The president of Iran has also come out to make his comment on these missile strikes. Now, should Israel do as it has promised to make Iran pay for its second missile strike this year? What's the likely response from Iran? Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, the message from Tehran, it would appear, is don't even consider it because we will respond yet again with a bigger missile attack. That seems to be the signal that they are sending. They've effectively sent a message that last night was a response to the killing of Ismail Haniya and Hassan Nasrallah. And from their perspective, this is now done and dusted. They say that there will be no more missile attacks unless Israel responds. But the difficulty is the mood music and the trend line suggest Israel is preparing to respond. There's been a security cabinet meeting today uh, here in Jerusalem, led by Prime Minister Netanyahu, in which it is said discussions run away over how they would respond. A number of media sources now are reporting that uh, oil and gas rigs, the infrastructure effectively of Iran's oil industry, even some of its nuclear sites could be on the table. Now, these are sites that really would have been left off the table months ago amid fears that it would just cause an all-out war in the Middle East between Iran and Israel that would appear the events of the past 24 hours have uh, have made the Israelis start to think that some of those red lines are ones they're willing to cross in order to try and restore deterrence. Well, thanks, Trent Murray reporting live to us there from Tel Aviv.